Veterans Day. And we honor all the members of our military and all branches, past and present, living and dead, and their families. Thank you for your service and your sacrifice. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Your birthday tomorrow. Oh. Oh. Um, is there any public comment on items not on the agenda? Additions or changes to the agenda? I don't. I'd like to, I had put Steve's request down further in the meeting, but if it's okay with everybody, um, since he's here and we're very glad to see you, I'd like to bring it back up to the top of the agenda. And snowmobile season starts, because I asked you, December 16th, although yes. this year maybe, well, you can't, but it ends on April 14th. I checked with um, Toby and Alfred, and I never got any complaints either that everything went well last year. There were no issues. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, it must, must have been a good year for it was. snowmobiling, right? Yeah. We didn't lose everything three times in the middle of the winter. Like right. Right. Yeah. I have that And none, none of the routes have changed? No, they have not. Okay. And again, just for those who aren't familiar with it, the, the, the list that's there, um, there was a number, the majority of those on there are access trails for local residents who have snow that I can't get to a main trail without right. using a little bit of a road. So they're not main trails. These are not all main trails. They're known by VAST. VAST doesn't have anything to do with most of these. Right. These are just these, these are local. There's there's only two two on here that are actual uh, numbered snowmobile trails, mainly the county road is one of them. Mm -hmm. And then the other is a short piece down by Mike Bennett's farm down there. Oh right. Uh, there's a short section that we have to use down there. Right, this right, because this is when you access the town road to cross over it, onto a trail. Right? Yeah, we, we come down off and um, uh, the hill up above, we come out by the old Peking Schoolhouse, and mm -hmm. we have to ride the road over to the backside of Mike Bennett's barn. Yeah. Then we get back off the road again, but there's no other way to get there yeah. without using that 400 yards of road. Yeah. And, uh, and then, of course, the county road. Yeah. Right. Right. We continue yeah. to probe at that, trying to figure out a way to... Have, have the landowners been cooperative? And... Most of them have, but there's, there's, and I, that's their yeah, business, that, so I right. don't get into yeah, that. Yeah, no, we don't need to get into that. Um, we're just thankful we have as many good property owners as we do. Yeah, and good. We, have, we maintain over 50 miles of trail and cows in Woodbury. Wow. And uh, we've had very good luck with, uh, with property owners. Good. We try to work with them, do everything we can with them. Well, thank you for your good service and well, and cooperating with landowners and the public if there's any issues. So we appreciate if that. If there are issues, we'd appreciate it. If someone yeah. would let us know, then we'll, we'll work with it. Yeah, I mean, I usually don't, I haven't heard of, I didn't have any. We used to have a lot more trouble with the road crossings. Yeah. Uh, the blooming equipment has improved and, and our operators are smarter. And uh, we try not to get any snow out in the road. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we go across the road twice and, and when we, have to, when we come back, we make sure we clean it all up. Yeah, and we appreciate that. But if we don't, as I noted in the request, um, just have Althea or um, uh, Toby let us know and we'll, we'll make it right. Yeah, now I know you're very responsive, so thank you. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the um, request by the Mountain Tamers Snowmobile Club for the 2019-2020 of snowmobile season as presented by Steve Gray. I'll second it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, hearing none, you're ready to go Thank as you. soon as the calendar tells you you are. Thank you. Have a safe drive home. Yeah. Thank you. Hopefully right. you don't have to Thanks, clean Steve. your truck If anybody does have any questions, please. Uh, oh, yeah, sure I know how to get a hold of us, because we- Yeah, I know how to get a hold of you. you. Yeah, we like, to, we like to work with people. Okay, thank, thank you, you very you. much. Give Mary my best. Oh. Can I just copy some raise the agenda? I think I left mine on the printer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Up next, um, we're going to need to get Jan Olson on by phone to talk about um, zoning. 
if you think we need to. Otherwise, um, I think I've sent out information from the Planning Commission where they have rec oh, am I in your way. Um, the Planning Commission did everything the way they were supposed to. They advertised our front porch forum, the CBRPC newsletter, the LCT online advertised in the Times Argus. Um, no one from Calis applied. They had four applicants total. Two wanted mileage, and one lived in Rygate and one lived in St. Johnsbury. So they weren't even familiar with our community at all. Um, there was another one, Ashley, I can't remember her, Ashlyn? Ashlyn, who lived in Callis, but she withdrew her name because she was moving. But she, I think she actually lived in East Montpelier, somewhere on the line between East Montpelier and Callis. <coughs> um, so she withdrew, and Bob Martin from Woodbury, who I had contacted before when we were looking for, um, you know, when we were thinking about that we were going to have to find somebody new. Right. Um, he has been the zoning administrator in Woodbury for a while now. And he was actually thrilled with the salary that he might get if he was the zoning administrator. And the plan is for John McCullough to work with the, whoever was going to be the new ZA for like six months, um, just to get familiar with the ropes. If if we agree with Bob Martin, it might he might get done. He might be faster because Bob's already read our regs and read the town plan. I came to the planning commission's meeting when they actually interviewed Bob Martin. And he seemed like he seemed like it be a good guy to deal with. Yeah, so very nice resume. Yeah, yeah, and he's retired, and so he, you know he's kind of. Just looking for other stuff to do, um, so that's that's the plan. And the zoning, uh, the planning commission recommended um, the appointment of Bob. And I, the only question I had, and I think, and I asked Jan, was when, what would be the effective date? And it would be for, like January first that he would be up um, in the position. And then I looked up about the statutory authority for who kind of is responsible for what. The Planning Commission recommends to the select board, the select board appoints. The select board is responsible if, for the, um, if things don't go well, to dismiss right. whomever. Um, the ZA is subject to all of our personnel policies, so on and so forth. The term is for three years. Um, that's about it. I don't know if you have any other questions or if you want to get Jan on the phone. I read over um, his resume and I, um, I don't have any questions. I, I think he's qualified. He's local. And he comes? He comes recommended by Woodbury. Well, and by the Planning Commission. By the Planning right. Commission, right. So even though even though in the end we only had one viable candidate, it sounds like we have the one we might have landed on even if we'd gone through a big process. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's important to say that because we want Bob to know that we're right. and we happy did, that he's here. Right, and we did go through a process. Yeah, you know, So we're, you know, we did our due diligence, or they did their due diligence right. in, in you know, reaching out, and he actually um, contacted them before they even advertised. To say he was interested, so I think mm -hmm. I think we're really lucky to yeah, find yeah. somebody mm -hmm. this qualified, you know, right in our neighboring town. Yeah, I I have not met him personally, but I have worked with him. Have you? Yeah. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. And if at some point you want me to put him on the agenda to come in so you can meet him, I can do that. But we're just yeah. kind of anxious to get this done. But maybe at our well, maybe after he gets started and right after his point. Yeah, after he has a couple weeks or a month under his belt or something. When, when, we, when we don't have a jam that... Right. Yeah. I would suggest providing him an opportunity, saying if you want to meet with us beforehand, you're right. welcome to, because he might have questions for us. Yeah, he might. Um, but otherwise, you know, he's we'll not going to be appointed effective January 1, and maybe we... Exactly. Uh, the only question I would ask of Jan, and you could probably answer this because you were present at the interview, 
and some of the subsequent discussion. Mm -hmm. Was there any concerns raised by anyone? No. Okay. Not one. No. No, he seemed really easy to talk to, you know, to communicate with, and, and if you talk to him, you can probably verify that. Yeah, no, he was very, very easy to work with, very responsive when I had mm -hmm. questions and had a good conversation with him about the issue that I was working on. Well, and we expressed to him at the interview that, you know, we expect somebody to get back to a resident or an applicant, you know, within a reasonable time. We tried to put in a time frame and you, everybody, I believe, got the um, zoning administrative job description the planning commission put together because we want somebody to respond to somebody within, you know, a couple of, at least a couple of days. And it's set up so that um, the zoning administrator can have their own line for folks to leave messages and he can check that, you know, from home. So, I mean, I'm sorry to, to see John and Dot, you know, not be in that role anymore because they've been doing it for so long. They've done a really great job and I really want to make sure that our minutes reflect how much we appreciate what they did to keep things rolling, keep things on track. Yeah. <clears throat> so with that, um, I'll make the motion that we appoint Bob Martin uh, for all the reasons we're saying, particularly because of the uh, Planning Commission's recommendation. Right. Appoint us on the administrative for a two-year, effective January 1 for a two-year term. Right. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Is there any further discussion? There are none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, I checked with Alfred. He didn't have anything for tonight. Um, since we're a little ahead of schedule, I don't see the Maple Corner. Can you hear me that? Can you hear? So this is that Maple Corner wanted us to do their liquor license, but I don't see it anywhere. It was, they wanted to renew their liquor license, um, even though they're in the process of selling the store. And they were supposed to leave it here for us to approve and sign, so I'm not quite sure. It's not in the folder. I've already been through this because I've looked at the orders and I didn't see anything. That's not it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's directions to use the phone. Well, that's a good thing to have. Um, you need to call the and tell her to call her. <laughs> <laughs> no, she said she'd be on standby. They were anxious for us to approve it. His, his photo was here. Well, but Jennifer, this is not here. Right. Um, Next. Actually, 15 so, minutes ago. Um, Katie, can you let the minutes reflect mm -hmm. that we were going to approve Maple Corner Store liquor license, but it's nowhere to be found, or however you want to say that nicely. Do we want to authorize you to sign it on our behalf, so if they need it in a hurry, we can accommodate them? We could. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I would make the motion that we authorize Denise to sign it on behalf of the select board once the document is available. If need be. Should need arise. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, John is out of town with medical stuff with one of his sons. Mm -hmm. So, that's why he's not here. All right, how about we do the Wyatt Healy letter of appreciation and certificate. Is that something we can call up for? Um, this was Judy's idea that we just sent him a thank you letter. He was. It's a nice was, idea. Huh? It's a nice idea. Yeah, yeah, it was a nice idea. So I have the originals here. Um, you probably already looked at them because they were in the folder. Mm -hmm. And Barbara designed the certificate, which is nice. Very nice. And it, it's not costing us anything, so. Even if it did. Even if it did. Right. It's little enough. Yeah. I've never met him. I mean, in all the years that I've been. Time. 
I mean, maybe he came to a select board meeting 20 years ago or something. I don't know about that. I, I, I don't recall ever having hmm. met him. So um, would you like to approve this? And then we can, I can sign it. John Samantha will sign it, and Judy will sign it. Yeah, I make a motion that we um, approve the um, letter of appreciation and gratitude for Wyatt Peely having served as the uh, Callis Cemetery Sexton for 20 years. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Great. We'll leave that for them to sign. us to call. Um, how about we don't do the minutes from who, last? Who are you calling at 7.30? Fred Duplisi oh, and okay. Sandra for the audit stuff. So they oh, oh. Fred had to drive from Burlington. So it seemed like it was a good idea to um, just let them do it by phone. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, do you want to do the minutes of October 28th, I believe? You had a couple comments, I had a couple comments. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <coughs> Did you read those? Mm-hmm. Minor, I did my first one there. Um, that the other one? Yeah, yeah. that word town was in there twice. So yeah. Oh, on the executive session, um, we voted to go into executive session at five to zero, and then when we adjourned the meeting, the motion was seconded, voted mm -hmm. on, and carried, and it was only four to zero. Mm -hmm. So I think we were all mm -hmm. there. If you go back to the top. John was absent, actually. Oh, so then they yeah, both so need to be four yeah, to be four to zero. Yeah. Funny. Did somebody yeah. walk so out right 10, then? So item 13 needs to be four yep. to zero. Yeah. All right. I make a motion that we approve the minutes from October 28th as edited. Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Done. All right. What else can we do for two minutes? Um, Chair, sure. Elizabeth Shedd's horses are out. We're out again. I had a call from dot nailer that they were in her yard two days in a row like last week thursday and friday um one had a halter and one did not did elizabeth do that at all wilson talked to nick and leslie ward and leslie ward was supposed to call me but she hasn't so i might just follow up and call her just so she knows that we're paying attention um and who is she? Well, Nick, why? What? Nick and Leslie Ward are the ones that are the main place where these horses go. Oh, okay. Um, and if you remember, they were concerned because the horses were sick and they didn't want them to contaminate their horses and they break down the fence. I thought that was the bones. Well, it's both. Okay. It's both. So I don't know where I don't know where the bones live. They're on Collar Hill, and the wards are up on Robinson, Robinson Hill. Right, they're on Robinson Hill. I think they just make the rounds in that area. Mm -hmm. So Wilson gave um, Nick and Leslie Ward the phone number and email address for Elizabeth Shedd's father because 
you know, obviously nothing is working from our end, and there's not, there's really just so little we can do. Really so little we can do. Janet has introduced legislation. Um, as drafted. Right, right. Ready for introduction. Yeah. Is that what I was going to say? She can't um, introduce it until January. Right, well, she, it's yeah. drafted it's by legislative council. Um, so we'll see what they do. I mean, the main thing, and I reinforce this with Janet, is you can have all the legislation, all the ordinances and everything that you want, but if you don't have a way to enforce it, they're of little value. We don't have a place to impound horses or other livestock if they're running loose. Where are we going to put them? Um, and it's an expense and, to the town. Right, and who's going to be the person to do that? It's not um, Wilson and I'm sure Elizabeth probably don't want to deal with livestock and impounding them and so on. So it's it's a real problem. And I don't know, I mean, I looked at the legislation that Janet um, had drafted. I just don't see how, I really don't see where it's going to do much of anything. But we'll see. Yeah, the, the issue, as I've come to understand it, is you know they made some changes and it took away any recourse that any of the towns would really have, and even in other <coughs> cases, you know, rescue organizations can mm -hmm. do right. Um, and it's sad, you know, because it's a real issue. It, what were the merits of? So what did it used to be? I don't remember that we talked about this with Jim. What did it used to be, and now it. We, what did we lose somewhere along the way? Well, effectively, there was ways to get um, law enforcement involved. And you really can't do that now. No, they won't, they won't do it. Because yes, we've called the state yeah. police and the sheriffs about the situation with those of the sheds horses, and they, there's nothing they can do. Um, so it's, I don't remember. It's not that they, it might be that not that they didn't. Not that they lost authority, perhaps they never had it and just stopped presuming it. Uh, I seem to recall that somebody explained to me that they actually did make a change mm -hmm. because it was falling on the state and they didn't want it. The state didn't yeah. want it. The state doesn't want it. The towns have little right. ability to enforce an ordinance for animals running at large. Um, you know, you've got to have a place to impound them somebody to go and pick them up, you know, you have to have a, a trailer of some kind to put the animal in. So Janet's bill basically, um, enumeration of powers for the purpose of promoting to public health safety. And it's to regulate, or I think so, because I think Katie put it in there. The bill proposes to allow a town, city, or village to adopt an ordinance regulating the running at large of livestock. Well, we already, we already can do that. I mean, I thank her for her effort in trying to do something, but I don't see where this is really going to be very helpful. To you? No. So we want to keep on top of this. I'm sure when this comes up, Janet will let us know so we can come in speak to the committee if it gets that far. Mm -hmm. It really, there really needs to be some way, <clears throat> some agency, some state agency, that when it's a continuing problem like what we have, or the pigs in Orange, in Orange Vermont that keep getting out and running loose. Thank you. And some, something yeah. in the plain field too. I think it was, it was heifers in Marshfield. Heifers in Marshfield, pigs in orange, horses in Cal callus. The, you chickens know, there, everywhere. Yeah, well, yeah. You should have been at my house tonight with chickens all going crazy, running around. Um, you know, there's. It just seems like there's got to be a way. What was it? There was something about um, doing like a collaborative. Is this the we have to schedule to follow up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, so, good to good to know, Katie. If you could, if mm -hmm. you had that, if you could put it in the folder, that would be great. I think it was in there. I, I didn't. Know. It's not in there now. No, no. I thought I sent it to you. Maybe not. Yeah. I'll, I'll send. It. I'll send you the stuff. I'll scan it and email it because this is Janet's email too. That 
That's an explanation. Um, what about bus tires? Okay, um, you'll see CV, Fiber, and Memorial Hall are gonna come to the meeting on the 25th, and part of the, I think that the Memorial, there's, I think there's a folder called Memorial Hall, isn't there? Because there's a letter in there that sets out the parameters by which the North Cal's Memorial Hall Association has to do certain things in order for us to agree to release the funds, and part of them is part of that is putting together um, a committee. <coughs> and I talked to Stephanie, and that hasn't been done yet because they were supposed to contact the conservation committee, conservation commission, to get one or two members of the commission to be part of this committee. And there's a letter that the select board signed back in. Maybe two years ago, um, saying you know what the requirements are for release of the funds, and to my knowledge, <clears throat> maybe they're working on it. I hope they are. That hasn't happened yet. And they're also going to ask us about um, being tax exempt. You know how we do for like the Adamant Co-op and the music school. Right. And there is <clears throat> the question I had is that building, as it gets you know, worked on, the value is gonna go up and up and up. And when you exempt that, it exempts the town and the school taxes. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure we know and we can probably, and we can find out what the school share is and what the town share is. And what I learned, and I'll, I'll double check, you can exempt it entirely or you can just exempt like the town share. So keep that in mind when, you know, before we get to the meeting on the 25th, that and that's, that could that's be a, a really good idea. That's <laughs> a significant chunk of money what we might have to push ask. back on them. Right. We might, you know, to have the callous taxpayers have to um, absorb the school portion as well might be a lot at this point, given the increase in, in the school taxes. And not that we don't appreciate what they did and the work that they're going to do to fix it up and have it be a, you know, a wonderful building again, we have to think about the other right. piece. Well, and in a way, that's the building paying its own taxes is part of the gift to the town. I mean, it's people used to get married there. It'll go back to being a big mm -hmm. draw. They can they can rent it and have fees. Right. And it would. It's not gonna, I would, I may understand it'll be a challenge, but they can, they can do it and the town will be grateful. Right, and, and like I said, the other piece we have to make sure, and we don't want to not have them do what the select board requested as re, a, a means for releasing the funds, because it's $50,000 from our conservation fund. That's a lot of money right. for us. So, you know, they agreed to do these things when they came to us to ask us to pledge, you know, that amount of money. So I think we need just to make sure that they follow through on what they're supposed to do. And do we have that? Is it in the... The letter is... If it's not in that... It should be oh, there it is. Okay, it'll be in that folder. There. Um, That's not a very big folder. I can look through that. Oh, yeah, a minute. Um, move it over. Oh, it's upside down, but that's it. Can you can you move it right now into the folder for the 25th? Is that easily uh, yeah. clip? Yep. Let's see if this one's right side up. No, probably. If I don't put it in the scanner a certain way, it goes in upside down. All right. And I've tried saving it with it being the other way too, but it doesn't work. So that's a really important letter for everybody to read ahead of time, because it spells everything right out. And we did that two years ago? Yeah. Was it 2018 or 17? I can't 18. remember. 18. 3, 12, 18. Yeah. Yes. So that's going to go in the folder? For the 25th. So we can read it there. We don't have to read it. 
<coughs> Cliff will probably like flip the pages around too. School bus well, tires. I rely on Denise. I can and figure it out. I can. I, I can flip. Yeah. Okay, school bus tires. Um, apparently, that issue's been resolved. They're going to put snow tires all the way around on the buses. Yay! Yeah. Nice. They did. Um, I guess apparently they didn't meet the school. They mean the school administrators meet with the road commissioners of the towns in our district and Callis and maybe one other town, I can't remember, did not subscribe to Roger Hill's um, whatever it is he does. Yeah. yeah. Thing. Notification. 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 Um, Callis will now subscribe to that and they wanted us to put in our highway budget the cost for Roger Hill um, subscription for the school and I suggested that now that everything is unified that the unified school district budget should include a budget line item for Roger Hill for all five towns. That's right. You know, and they said that's a good idea. They didn't write that yet. Okay. She doesn't. She does not generally respond very well. This is she being the temporary superin interim superintendent. She doesn't respond, or she doesn't respond well. Both. Okay. <laughs> that covers faces. Yeah. She doesn't respond goodly. Goodly, is that really a word? <laughs> it um, cannot be. Yeah. And that's, I think that's it's kind of not in popular use anymore. But it is a, it's a really? more like a goodly amount. Yeah, that's an yeah, old fashioned way of yeah. saying it, right? It's right up there with. All right, so how about we, Katie, do you know how to work the phone? Can you get mm, yeah, our phone on the line? I think that's good as much as Anything on the traffic ordinance? Is that ready? No, I talked to Alfred. We're trying to come up with a time to meet. Are you ready, Denise? Yeah. And um, gonna, this is Fred's home phone number? Yes. And this and this will probably be an executive session after we get done with the audit stuff. Two items, IT and union. Hello? Hello, is this Fred? Yes, it is. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Boy, you picked a good night not to come to Callis. Yeah, I'm looking outside even here in Montpelier. It's pretty nasty. Oh, I so. thought you were in Burlington, Montpelier. Yeah. Yep, yeah, we've heard all kinds of things, anywhere from 3 inches to 12. Well, I guess we're almost due, so. Yeah, and I guess we just need to get Sandra on the phone, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, you go ahead. Over just a minute. Mm -hmm. Hey Sandra, the gang's all here, we made it. Oh good, I'm glad you all made it safe. Hey, one quick question before we do audit. We were looking to approve the Maple Corner liquor license and don't see it sitting around here anyway. Do you, do you know anything about that? Oh gosh, I don't know anything about that. Okay, well then never mind. let's move on. Okay. <laughs> so Fred's on the line um, and we're ready to go. All right. He's here. Are you there, Fred? I. Fred, are you there? I think you've got to push the button again. Hmm. Fred, are you there? Hello? Hello. Oh, Hello, success. Hello, success. All right, you guys can hear each other. We can hear both of you. Is that as loud as it goes? Yes, I can. Yeah. I can hear Fred really well. Um, okay. All right, so how would not, you? Not you so much, so, but that's okay. Well, I'll, I'll listen hard. Yeah, we'll just have to. Okay, so I, you guys are going to do most of the talking anyway, I think, right? Right. So I guess we should start off with the. Um, let Fred start off. How about that? Are you there? Hello. Hi. Yeah, I'm getting. I have a. Uh, I'm getting sort of, of a double, like a like an echo, a I real weird the echo. Of that. Oh, man. I, I have that as well. Is that better? A little better. I hear Fred perfectly fine. If you can hear me, I can just go. 
Go. Okay. okay. We can hear you, Fred. Go for it. Okay. Do you want let do you want to know who's here at the table? Do you want to know which board members are here? I'm not here. I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, are you hearing that? No. I think you and I can have a conversation, but I, I can, if you can hear me, I can go, but I'm not hearing you really at all. And I don't think Sandra's either. So, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yeah. That's better, much better. Yeah, I picked the phone up. <coughs> so, I'm, I'm just want to tell you who's here at the table, Fred. Can you hear me? Again, you're bouncing, but yes, go ahead. Okay, so there's um, myself, Denise Wheeler. Instead of passing the phone around, I'll let... I'll just introduce everybody, Sharon Wynn Fannin, Cliff Emmons, Rose Pelchuk, John is not here tonight because he's in, um, he's out of state with his son on a medical issue. And there's Katie Lane Karnas, our recording secretary, and Jerome Lapanya from ORCA. Are you ready? Okay, so if you want to take it away, Fred, that would be great. Hey, Sam. If you have questions, um, you'll probably have to stop and speak into the phone because I'm not hearing, but I will go through. And if I keep talking, then just give me a yell. Okay. So if you have the audits in front of you, um, this is an audit done in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards and government auditing standards because it's uh, required by state statute. Uh, our role is to provide an opinion on the financial statement, and that's on page two. And other than the issue we talked about a year ago uh, related to the valuation of the investments in the cemetery fund, uh, all the other funds are clean, unmodified opinions. So that's the general fund, the highway fund, and the town hall renovation fund, and then everything else. So the only issue we have is uh, that under modified cash basis, the, the, the cemetery assets are required to be carried at cost. And that can happen one of two ways. Either someone would need to research the original cost of the investments that were purchased and or they need to basically buy and resell, which reestablishes cost. And I understand they're not, and I understand, you know, the hesitation to do that. Um, but if you're fine with the qualification, then that's really the only issue other than that everything's fine. I'm not sure I understand what you're saying, Fred. Can you hear me or just... No, I can, I, can, I can hear you, but I don't understand what that means. In that. Okay, so what happens is that there's, there's a number of bases of accounting. Um, and there's full accrual bases, which is very complicated, uh, would frankly make your... It would be hard to understand your financials um, and require quite a level of expertise uh, from the town accounts in order to, to do it that way. This is called modified cash basis. And basically, it's money in, money out with a few exceptions. Um, one of the exceptions is, some of the exceptions that are acceptable are, you know, money that's owed to the state of the bonds. You're not, not your money. It's, it's like marriage license, dog licenses, payroll withholdings, which is not your money. Uh, and then any money that's due to other people that you're holding. Um, and then on the asset side, uh, there's obviously cash, and then we have a deposit with an insurance company, which is like cash. And then lastly, we have investments. And those are all acceptable modifications. The problem is, because it's cash basis, where the, the investments are being marked to market, which would be fine in accrual basis, but for cash basis, they really should be maintained at their original cost. Now, I understand that doesn't provide you great information because it, it's gonna give you a value that might be quite old, but the theory is that until you sell it, it with market fluctuations, which depending on what you're invested in, can be, can be volatile. Until you sell it, you haven't realized anything. It's, it's just a number. And so that's why it's required to be kept at cost. And so the, the cemetery investments are hard to market, which means that they don't meet the pure modified cash basis accounting. And so we simply have to tell you that in our opinion. We have to just say, other than that one issue, everything else is in accordance with the basis of accounting you've chosen to report on. So when you say so when you say original cost, you mean the amount of the original investment? Yes. Okay, now I get it. So, yes. So Fred, is that, can, I think Fred, you can hear me. Is, yeah, I can hear you great. Great, I can hear you great as well. 
Sharon, we keep talking about the cemetery funds, but the, the both the basis paragraph and the qualified opinion paragraph mention governmental activities. What yes. what are we talking about when you refer to government activities? Okay, that's a good segue. Let's, if you move to the next page, page four. Page three. Page three or four. Page four. Page four. Which is Exhibit A, which is the governmental activities. Okay. So when we do a town financial statement, and that's true whether it's whatever basis, is you're required to combine all of the funds and show a single column. I'm not sure how meaningful this is because towns tend to really operate on a fund basis, but because the cemetery is a part of this, we have to say that the governmental activities as well has that one issue. So, oh, just because it's part of So that's why. But when I really, you know, what I like to focus on really is the fund statements, which will start on page six. But it, but it does affect the governmental activities as well because the, the investments are a part of it. Because it, governmental activities includes the cemetery. That's the answer. Yeah, it includes everything. Right, it's so general, it's... Your highway, your cemetery, your town hall, all your little right. lawns, all your, yeah. Right. It's just a conglomerate so this is a, of everything. It's a total of everything. But the issue, Correct. but the issue, maybe I misunderstood you. The issue arises in governmental activities because of the cemeteries. So, Correct. so you fix the cemetery and, right. So we'll have to yeah. get in, right. So we'll have to be in contact with the trustees again and let them see this part of your audit. And he said there's yeah, nothing the matter with it. We just have to identify it. Right. Only because of the cemetery investments. Right. So if um, we, good. so if we don't do anything, because you said this was just you needed to point that out. If we don't do anything with this, every time you do an audit, you're going to come up with the same issue. Is that correct? That's correct. And if That's we, that opinion would be worded the same. Yes. And so there's no. So what? There's no <laughs> issue if we don't do anything. We're not. Um, no, there, no, we're not, no, there's no, okay. there's no, you know, it's there's no, li no, it's no, wrong, it's just saying this is an issue. Okay, so there's no liability involved, I guess is what I'm getting at. No, not. Okay, no. all right, great, thank no. you for clarifying that. Yep. So um, now you want so us to I go to pay for those funds, because that's what, that's what I think really is kind of what everybody really looks at. So, on page six and seven are your balance sheets and income statements for all of your major funds and then your non-major, which are broken out in the back, uh, combined. So the, the major funds for you are the general fund, the highway fund, the cemetery, the town hall renovation, although it shows zero at the end of the year, it had a lot of activity through the year. 
and then your non-majors are made up of a lot of other funds, such as, you know, Lakes and Pond, Burst Palm, Pond, uh, Town Office, Highway Equipment, uh, other special revenue funds. We can look at that in the back. So the appraisal, there's a bunch of things. Is that based so, on, a, uh, is that, Fred, is that based on amount of money? I'm sorry, it's based on amount, yes. Yes, X percent of revenues and X percent of dollars, if it meets both tests, it's considered a major fund. Okay. And so, uh, or revenues, and so that's why the, if you look on the next page, the, the renovation fund had like almost half a million dollars of, uh, of expenses, yeah. um, and so they all meet it. Um, probably one of the most, that people look at the most is the general fund, because it's kind of a, you know, it raises the tax money of the highway, which, you, you know, you, we'll talk about that, but the general fund is the, the one where, you know, the tax dollars end up, basically. So. Your unassigned fund balance at the end of the year was really close to what it was a year ago. It, it was 318,000 last year, it's 311 now. It's virtually the same. Uh, that, that's a very healthy, healthy fund balance. Um, your first taxes are due in early September, and I see you're running about 65 days or so. So you, you've got a good fund balance to make sure that you're covering your cash flow and your general fund and your other funds. And so. Um, your your highway fund by design, you end up transferring any excess to the uh, capital fund, and so that's why that has a zero at the end. And then we have the other two funds, and the town hall renovation was simply completed, um, and so that that funds at zero at the end of the year. Um, if we look at the income statement, we can see that on page seven that at the, your change in fund balance for the whole year on $850,000 of money coming in and out was about $6,800, so pretty close to break even for the year. The highway is break even because of the transfer out, the 69559, that second to the last number, I don't, that money goes into a capital fund. I don't see, I'm having trouble keeping up with you on where you're at. You said 68000 somewhere? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm on the bottom of page seven in the second column. Oh, okay. Yep, I see it. Yeah, so that, that transfer was approved, and that moved the excess surplus in the highway fund over to a highway capital fund to be right. used for needs. <coughs> right, and, that, and we, did, yeah. we did that through um, a warned article, as you know. Okay. So, and then, we can look back there. Um, and yes. So that, that makes that money committed, which means that it's done by the donors. So when you right. reflect that in the back, it is a committed fund balance, which means that you can only spend it the way the taxpayers want you to spend it, or you'd have to go back to them to change that. Right. Um, the next section of the audit or explanatory footnotes, that runs about 18 pages, is you know, who you are, how you operate, uh, more information on the accounting, more detail on your various assets and liabilities. So that's page. Um, so that's pages 18 through that, eight. That's most of the report. Yeah, that's most of the report, right? Yeah, eight through 25. There's yeah. a lot of notes. Um, there's a very detailed note on your pension plan that's required if you're part of Beamers. Right. Um, and so that's that's required to be put in there um, because you share in that. Um, it shows what your share of the liability is if you needed to pay it, which you won't. As what long page as is that? What, what page is that? Uh, it's, it's easiest to see on 18. page 21. Page 21? Okay. Yep. And you'll see in the middle, about the middle of the page, your your share at this point is 133000 But because it's based on lots of estimates, but the biggest one being is the investment return, we're required to show that if 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 the investment return is not seven and a half percent, what they hope it will be or assume it will be, if it's if it's less by one percent, your liability is two hundred twenty six thousand. If it's one percent better, it's fifty eight thousand. So there's a lot of volatility in this, but but the bottom line is you're doing what you need to do. You're you're funding it. It's a pretty well funded system according to the actuaries. There will be enough money based on the current rates to pay all retirees forever. 
Well, I, I, I'm a retired state employee, and I just got something in the mail that there was an issue with the state employee's retirement fund. Do you know what that's all about? That is true. That is true. That is a, the state employee's fund and the teacher's fund is woefully underfunded. Well, that's not true of the municipal fund, and that's because... Okay, this is the municipal the, one, right. This, yeah, the, the state simply bills the municipalities. So when they have an outside source of revenue, they funded the, the uh, pension. When they have to put their own dollars, even though it's our dollars, as taxpayers, but when they have to put their own state dollars in, they've underfunded it uh, for a long period of time. And uh, we're, the, it's coming home to roost now in terms of the amount of money that it's going to take off in terms of new revenue sources. So that's not the case with the Beamers plan, but it is clearly the case with both the state employees and the teachers. Right. They, are yeah, since the fathers, that's yeah. what they talk about. Well, and... Yeah, because they said in this newsletter that I got that they hope they don't have to cut our pensions. <laughs> hope yeah, is not so. a plan. <laughs> Another strategy. Yeah. Okay, sorry to sorry to digress. Um, the, the then we start in the back of the schedule. <laughs> Twenty six on for five pages is your budget actual. So this is the budget that was approved by the board by the voters. Um, you'll see on page 26 that on the revenue side, you did not bring in about 25,000 um, that you budgeted for in various categories, a lot of it in time of taxes. Um, however, on the expense side, you, and I'm looking now on page 30, you spent 17,200 less budgeted so all in all you plan to have it's on the budget was out of balance by eleven hundred dollars you actually did seven thousand two hundred on the expense side it's, it's in total it's less than two percent on the total so that's that's pretty close and as i said the in total your fund out state is about as close as break even as i've seen so oh, you okay, so that's good the same so we did a good job Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I, oh, I said so. I said so. We did a pretty good job. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm sure some of it was planned, some of it's out of your control. Um, you know, like, you know, we, we got a storm tonight. It's going to eat up some budgets, probably with earlier than people hoped. But um, your insurance was under budget by quite a bit. So I mean, there's when you look through it, there are variances, both positive and negative. But in total, it came out pretty close. Great. Um, the next two pages are your highway budget again. Um, this one, you, if you look on page 31, you budgeted 802,000. You took in a lot more, but a lot of that are the various grants that the, right. the highway department gets. Your culvert grants, your roads grants, your, you know, all of these various grants that come in. But, but what it means is that when you look on the expenditure side, they spend more than budgeted as well. But all in all, uh, it's a break-even budget, and they actually had $69,559, that number we saw earlier, yep. available based on the vote to transfer into the highway equipment fund. So if if the voters continue to do that, this fund will always kind of have a zero balance um, as long as there's surpluses because that money will be transferred over. Okay. Um, the next series of schedules, uh, three through eight, are all the other, the non-major funds. Um, and, you know, on page 35, we, we start to see, so every every fund that you have is tracked independently in your accounting system and has to be shown separately. Um, so we have all these special revenue funds. These are funds that are fu funded by restricted revenues or committed revenues. And, you know, it's your reappraisal, your conservation, trails, Invasive species. So these are your grants and things like that. Does that on page thirty-seven? Hello, oh, sorry. I was going to ask a question, but I think I'm good. I'm sorry, I didn't quite get it. Oh, I, w I thought I had a question, but I never mind. Okay, okay. Um, and then thirty-seven and thirty-eight are your capital projects. So these are more of the capital thing, capital in nature. Um, you know, they're, they're the town hall, the equipment fund, the highway equipment, uh, just various uh, that, that will be 
used primarily for capital major, capital items. So we still, so and you're... And then that gets us to the... Fred, West. Fred, so yeah. there's still money remaining in the Curtis Pond Dam Fund of $5,000? That's what it says on this page. Which page are you? On page 37. It says there's yeah. 5600 $5, roughly in the Curtis yeah. Pond Dam Fund. Yes. Okay. And that's restricted yeah. and that's restricted just for that, correct? That is at this point, yes. Uh, it's it's or at least been assigned for that. It depends on the original source of the money that came in. We had um, the legislature. yeah, the legislature, I believe um, I forget now what year it was gave us like 20,000 or something for engineering yeah. for studies. engineering studies. Okay. Thank you. So this must be that leftover money. Must be, yes. yeah. Yeah. And then because it's an audit done in course with government auditing standards, we're required to include a report on compliance with laws and regulations and internal control that would have an impact on financial reporting. And we had no material weaknesses and the only significant deficiency we had related to the review and for journal entries. And to kind of round out everything, uh, Sandra's then put in her response, which we agree with will we'll solve this deficiency. Can you tell us can you tell us where we should be looking? What what page and what page and where are we should we be looking? I'm looking at page forty one now. Yeah, because I saw something in the management letter about internal controls. Yes, there was another management letter, but this, this is, these are things that are uh, higher level of findings. Okay, so significant deficiency was the journal entries um, and the record. It's not a material weakness. Right. We had no problem with journal entries. We just think that they just need to have a second set of eyes, and um, Sanders' response should be bound right in there, and that indicates that when I don't, Denver comes in oh. to do their monthly work, that they will review the journal entries. And yes, we have that. She, the chair. Yes, yeah. she, yep, she did that. Yep, thank yeah. you, Sandra. So that, that to us is a good solution. In a small office, it's hard to have perfect controls, but uh, having that opportunity to have someone come in and do that, that's perfect. Right, yeah, we have a plan going forward, so thank you. Yeah, so. Um, so that's it. There's a lot of information in there. I don't know if there's any specific or other questions anyone has on that. No, it makes my head hurt. <clears throat> so you mentioned that there is another letter, and that is the management letter. Um, this one is, it repeats the one issue, uh, but we also then bring up other things that are more policy related. Yeah. Um, yeah, I made a note and, of some of them. I reviewed, yeah, I, I, re, I reviewed your um, management letter when it was in, the, I, I made my notes on your, the draft, but we need a couple of policies. It sounds like we need a policy for um, adjustments to the books or original entry. Is that the journal? That's the journal. Yeah, that's that's the, about the journal entry. Right, yeah. so we, and we have a plan for that, which is NEMRIC. Um, and also we need a plan for a policy for journal entries. That for what? Huh? For a policy? I'm not there yet. Uh, a policy that requires appropriate officials to authorize journal entries. Oh, that's the recommendation. <coughs> okay. Yeah, and then yeah, we need a and then we does. and then we need a fraud policy. Um, I don't know whether the league has something. They do. Okay. They, yeah, if you were to go onto the VLCT website, they do have a sample fraud policy. And you can revise it to meet the needs of your town, but it but it is a it's a pretty good sample. Yeah. It's okay. Just, it's just simply saying it'd be nice to know that if it ever happens, and we hope it never does, but that that everybody knows what they need to do so that it protects both both parties, the accused and the accuser. Yeah. It's important, obviously, to have and it, and, and you don't want to wait because it's obviously going to, if it ever does, you just want to know what everybody needs to do. Right. Um, and that's and that doesn't have anything to do with the cybersecurity fraud stuff that's going on, does it? Well, I mean, it, most of the cyber is from an outside source, which is not considered fraud. Fraud is internal. Okay. But, but it's possible. I mean, it is possible that there could be 
on crimes that are, that are internal. But, but this is more, you know, this really relates to everything. And, it, and cyber is part of it, yes. Okay. Yeah. And then the other, the only... And then, and then the progress assessment is kind of a, goes along with it. That's really understanding what risks you face. And we, we've seen, you know, some, like out in the town of Norwich, where, you know, I mean, that shouldn't have happened, but it did. And there's so many, you know, ransomware and things like that, that they right. just understand, you know, what, what things are out there that are possible. And what, what can we do to the best of our ability to mitigate them? There's, yeah. there's no perfect system, but you do the best you can. And that's in the, and that would be part of this fraud policy? Like yeah, what, that's like, part of the fraud, well that's the fraud risk assessment. Okay. So the policy is what do we do if we have it, the assessment is understanding what, what areas are we at risk and what are we already doing about it. And where do we, who does a fraud risk assessment? Um, we can get you examples from other towns that you could use, but it's an internal process. Okay, that would because be helpful. Probably no one better knows your system than you do. Right. Um, but, but the league guides you, we've done some work with other towns, but it, if, if you saw the examples, I think it's, you know, you'd, you'd go and say, well, we're doing a lot of these things, you know, we're, we're doing independent bank recs, we're, we're, you know, we're doing these things, we're, we're giving out receipts, we're, you know, I mean, so a lot of it you're going to be doing, um, we know who our vendors are, we, the board is involved, I mean, it, it, it's all of those kinds of things, the, the, how active you guys are, and we know you are, so that, that's important. It sounds like that, uh, I think it's, Fred is, are we talking about that, um, there's a table, like a audit tool that VLCT publishes to do this? Well, I don't, I don't know that they have one, but I do have one that a, that a town has allowed me to share that is really comprehensive. And it's going to be more than you need, but you can eliminate what you don't need. Okay, that would and be. It'll give you like it'll. It's just a good. It's almost like a checklist of, because it's so comprehensive that it, it makes you think about things that you may not think about. Okay, that would be it really. May not be that would be helpful it may if you. Not be exhaustive, but I can get it to you. Okay, that would be really helpful, and we can. And is this from a town that has had a, a, a bad experience? No, no, it's a town that actually. They've had no fraud. I mean, they've had, every town's had issues, but this one's never had a fraud that I know about. Um, okay. But they just wanted to be ahead of things, and they, they did. There's been a number of towns that have done this. It's a larger community. It's actually St. John's Um That's way bigger but, than us. Yes, yeah, so a lot of stuff we can eliminate. If, you, if it's in a format that we can make changes to, we can just eliminate what doesn't apply. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, and then, the, you know, the last one is just, you know, documenting all those good controls. Once you look through that assessment and understand what you do, it's important just to document all the things you do. Um, and then we talked about investment and banking policy. That, that's really, under, that's, that's, you know, the board and the treasurer getting together and determining what things are safe, what, what things do we want to invest in, what things don't we want to invest in. Um, just, just what is our appetite for risk? Um, it just so that, and again, the league has a very good example of investment banking policy. Okay. And then the last is just reminding you about the investments um, in the cemetery fund, um, and explaining the two ways to do it. Okay. Uh, is there more? That's it. Oh. That's a lot. That is a lot. My head's going to explode. Um, board members, any questions? No, um, I guess my only question might be to Sandra. Hello? Hey, Sandra, are you there? Can you hear me okay? It's Cliff. I cannot understand what you're saying. Fred, can, can, can you understand? No, I can't either. I think you need to hold the phone or hold, pick up the phone. Or... Can you hear me any better now? A little better, yeah. A little bit better, yeah. I'll use my announcer's voice. Okay, no, I don't have any uh, significant questions. I can cover it with Sandra later. Thanks. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, this, this doesn't good. work out as good as I was hoping it would. We gotta figure out that other phone. I think it would have been, this would have been clearer if we could have figured out the other phone. Next time I'm in the office, I'm gonna have Judy show me how to use it. 
Right. Oh. Okay. So um, all we have to do tonight then is sign that letter for the contract for the next three years, right, Fred? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's gone up a little bit, but um, you know, now that we've got you're doing our audit for a couple of years now under our belts, it feels pretty good. Yeah, I'd like to think so. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, to just. Maybe there'll come a point where you won't find anything. Then what will you do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So if there's nothing else, we'll let you wonderful people go and enjoy the looking outside at the snow globe. I'll go out and start to shovel. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, select board. Good night. Good night, Sandra. Good night, Sandra. <laughs> thank you, Sharon, for letting us use your phone. Yes, thank you. I don't understand how come that thing didn't work. There's some other button. Yeah, there's some other button that we didn't have right. All right, so I think overall, from what I could gather, we did pretty darn good. Yeah. And we did very well. Um, and uh, largely in part to Sandra. And her good, her good work. So let's have that reflected in the minutes to thank thank her for her good work and down treasurer. Um, so with that done, would you like to sign the contract for the next three years? We looked at it last time. We looked at it last time. We decided to wait until after we spoke that we were good with the mm -hmm. um, modest increases. I'm sure they're having increases in their employees' health insurance and stuff just like we are. So we all we need to sign this, although there's only three spaces we can just sign underneath it. So I'd like to make a motion that we approve the Sullivan and Powers scope of services contract um, for the years ending June 30, 2020 through 2022. For financial audit. Yes. I'll second that. Okay, is there any further discussion? Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, hearing none, I'll just, I think there's, I'll double check, but I think there's only one place we have to sign. And while we're doing that, would anybody like to make a motion to go into executive session for personnel matters? So moved. Okay. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 At 816. Okay. And Katie okay. is going to.